Oh yeah. Hello and welcome back oh, to yeah. the Zero Strategy Podcast. Oh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> Episode twenty six. If I'm not wrong, sure about that? I'm pre- I'm like ninety nine percent sure it's episode twenty six. Okay. Right. Uh, <laughs> thank you for uh, listening. First of all, uh, we have a very exciting episode today. Lots to talk about uh, and lots going on. So um, as always, we're going to start off by just catching up with everyone. I should say as well, if you have any questions for us at any point during the podcast, please feel free to throw them in the the chat in the live stream here uh make sure to add one of us or at the podcast so we can see it and if we don't get to it immediately feel free to re-ask it and uh, we'll try and get around to it uh so to start us off grog what has been going on what's your week been like what you've been doing uh just more of the same uh this week i got new glasses which i'm really excited about uh, not these but um probably in a week's time uh, i have two new pairs of glasses uh i, saw I have on Twitter, updated actually. my prescription and ages so it'll be nice to actually see slightly better again uh now i can stop blaming all of my missed headshots on you know out of date lenses um but yeah i've just been you know (laughs) just been playing a lot of warzone um the huge the huge fair enough uh humps what you been up to um not a whole lot Uh, i've been playing a lot of tony hawk lately i'm super digging i get all the vibe all the all the all the nostalgia feels from playing Tony Hawk, so I've been doing. I actually bought it twice. I got it on PC, and then I was tired of playing it on my joke of a chair I have, and downloaded it on PlayStation so I can play on my couch. Seems so, like that'd be a good couch me. couch game. Oh, it's a great couch out. game. Yeah. And I got actually it was funny too because like Ellie, my daughter, she kept uh, watching me play, and I was like, "Do you want to play?" And she was like, "Yeah." So I just handed her the controller and put it on free skate, and she spent probably thirty minutes alling that's really all she did and then finally she like <laughs> kicked i told her i was like all right when you jump i was like hit these buttons at the same time and then she kick flipped i was like yo you just kick flip and she's over there she's like standing in front of the uh in front of the tv and she's like jumping as she's alling in the game and stuff and so she's doing this for like 30 minutes she loves it that's awesome cool uh and uh well yeah for myself i've just been cheaper than a wee fit <laughs> yeah true. exactly <laughs> true uh, i've been on the apex grind a lot um Although that game makes me so angry. Like, it's very weird. It's so different to Warzone for being a battle royale. It's it's very, very different. So, uh, And then Ghost of Tsushima. I'm still in love with that game. Every time I play it, it gets better and better. So I'm really, really enjoying it. How many it. times have you killed your horse? Super nerd stuff. I, none. My horse is fine. Thank you very much. I... Uh, I mean, I don't know. There's a TikTok that would beg to differ, but <laughs> nah, nah. Horse is fine. Horse is fine. All good. <laughs> uh, so if you're watching the stream, you may have noticed we also have a special guest with us here today. Uh, we have Corpy joining us on the show. Thank you very What's much for being here. What's going on, guys? Uh, so if you wouldn't mind just telling everybody who you are and what you do on the internet. So uh, my name is Corpy. Um, I'm a I'm a Twitch streamer. I'm a uh, semi-famous tiktoker (laughs) and i'm a youtuber a content creator all the way around um just having a blast man fulfilling my dream you know hell yeah so one of the reasons we wanted to get you on is because you've had a lot of growth recently you've kind of you know blown up a little bit with uh regards to different platforms and things so i always preach on here constantly that you need to be making content on other platforms to kind of get exposure get noticed and get seen mm-hmm. so how, first of all how long have you been streaming on on twitch um so i started last year and i was streaming like on and off and i really started taking it serious um march okay and have you always been kind of doing other content as well like have you been doing youtube from the start and doing you know all these other uh, platforms like no. tiktok no so that's kind of come mm-hmm. later on Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah. tell us about the, uh, the, 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 what happened with your TikTok and, and kind of how that's affected you. So, um, so I started in March streaming on Twitch. Um, by the beginning of June, I was averaging about two to three viewers a stream. Um, I decided because I was looking up all kinds of videos cause I'm like, man, how do I grow? How do I do this? You know? And everyone's like posts on different platforms and I'm like, you know what? Fine. Okay. <laughs> and so I went to TikTok. Um, I posted a couple of videos. Um, they did, they did decent for like being my first videos. I was really impressed because they would get like one to 200 views. And I started to see like immediately I went from like 
one to two to, to two to four. And then I went from four to six. And then I posted a video of me where I had someone come in and they donated some and what they said got to me and I cried a little bit um, on stream. Yeah, I'm that guy. I'm the guy who cried <laughs> on stream. <laughs> That's me. But um, I posted it and overnight it went viral. And I opened up my TikTok or I opened up my Twitch, went live and had to get myself up get myself i'm a content creator <laughs> so, <laughs> i had to get myself up off the floor when i turned my stream on and, and saw 80 people in there Damn. oh shit so yeah it was like overnight growth i know it's not the same for everybody but i will say it's so it it died down from then it went from 80 to probably like 30 40 but the more that I post, the more people come in, mm. and I would never, I would never guide anyone else <laughs> away from posting on other platforms because Twitch doesn't give you anything, you know. They're right. just like, here's a way to stream. Here you go, find it out yourself. Yep. Yep. For sure. Yeah, the algorithm is pretty sparse in terms of how it, how it gets. I mean, it's at least something now where you go to a directory and it's not just ranked purely by views like it does mm -hmm. throw up like usually the highest person in that directory and then it'll throw up like here's somebody with 10 viewers and then here's somebody with 50 and then here's someone with two and then here's someone with like 2000 um oh, yeah. it mixes it up but it doesn't seem like there's a strong rhyme or reason as to why the person with 10 is thrown up at the top versus the person who's like maybe it's like tim the Tatman hosting like you know five hundred thousand people like <laughs> Who, who though, fucking knows how that works? Recommended, recommended is like I don't even know what it's based off. What you play, mm. you've streamed Destiny too. So now, like my recommended channel channels are like Destiny two streamers. Like, is that mm. all it's based on? Like, well, um, the 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 problem Twitch has, uh, and it's it's not a problem. I think they can really solve easily. Is that that's the exact thing on YouTube? Content is so much more um, broken down into like you know different tags and different. Uh, styles whereas on twitch all they really have to go off is well you watched this streamer play rocket league so here's five other rocket league streamers but it's like well i wasn't watching them because they play rocket league i was watching them because they're a friend of mine that was playing right. that game yeah. right it's yeah. it's mm -hmm. I, I think tw twitch has got a difficult situation there and i, th they I feel like they tried to fix it with the tags but it doesn't work right it, it, the, the well, tags are useless well and the thing is i think that it they could be like so Kind of reflecting back on where i before i started streaming full-time like as a librarian like the metadata that youtube uses is extremely powerful um TikTok, same way instagram same way um i think it's interesting because twitch seems to be analytics driven uh and not necessarily reflexive of taking the metadata that users are creating and using that as a means to like guide people along with the analytics so like on the analytics side you've got them basically big brother watching you you watch this you you stream this we're going to give you more of this um but not necessarily based on like searches or browsing and because like people people search a directory they don't search for keywords or topics it almost like makes those tags redundant because metadata tags only work if those are terms that people are using so like if somebody uses the words like um you know ace and valorant and something else then ideally they should be directed not only to like a directory for valorant but also a bunch of clips and highlights where people have tagged like we should be able to tag clips and highlights if we did that and people there was a stronger push to embrace the search function i think you'd probably see the recommendation quality um and the sort of intuitiveness of like the the algorithm improve on like twitch but i just don't think they seem to be interested in consuming uh data for the purposes of like advertising and just like taking that information um and 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 running with it from an analytical point of view but less so from like a proactive let's build a foundation where people like where you have a searchable database that like is really robust it just it's youtube is like so different because it's all about that so like yeah. if like if you condi like pop off and with a video and you know it's tagged 
with these five things that like all seem to really like be the things that caught the viewer's interest. And that's what they ha happen to be searching for at the time. Like, you know, Ginger, Scotsman, you know, I don't know. You fill in the blank. Like they tall, tall, shit, tall, tall. Yeah, tall. tall. Yeah. Yeah. Tall, successful. No. Garbage <laughs> game. Dies but you know what time. I mean? And it's like, <laughs> yeah, because because Should the whole thing is like YouTube is about searching. Tall. So they have to look for what the user had wanted and TikTok seems to be this interesting blend of like both where it's both the analytics like um side where it's trying to intuit what you want in it in advance of you actually knowing if you want it and then also at the same time allowing content creators to really lean into uh, hashtags which is really just metadata and then like it's kind of like dovetailing both of those together which is why it seems to be like so weirdly specific that like Hums talks about his TikTok experience and like Kibbles will talk about his TikTok experience and they're like not even remotely the same because like <laughs> the site is just catering a whole different suite of shit at you that like because it's it's just it, it knows you well enough now. I get a lot of walk searched. chances on mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> no, mine I just recently. Get a lot of people asking me to do the walk. <laughs> And I just, oh, I please do, please it, do. Man. Give the people what they want. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> the... Do I want to be the guy that cried on stream, or do I want to be the guy that did the WAP? <laughs> <laughs> like that's where I'm at. <laughs> yeah. So I have a few more questions, like around your kind of TikTok experience. So when you started off, uh, I've seen the one that you were talking about, the one where you got the donation, and uh, mm -hmm. you know the one that kind of initially blew up. Um, mm -hmm. So did you kind of start off by making just clips from your stream? Or, because I know you've done some other ones as well, where it was like you sort of filmed them specifically for TikTok. How did you kind of start? Did you get started just with Twitch clips is what I'm basically asking. So, first I started with, so I was like watching TikTok and I was looking at all the people that were doing gaming stuff. And I tried to kind of do my own thing. So, at first I was like really, really proud of my setup. So, I did like a video of my setup. And then I started, uh, we went and attempted and got it but we went for the world record for the world's longest stream yes and so we were recording tiktoks of that because part of their like requirements is that you had like every five hours you did an update and had it recorded so we were like hey you know what better way to do it and like try and grow at the same time and That's so smart. we did that um use that so we have that Every five hours, we had another TikTok. We had another way to prove that we were doing it. Mm -hmm. And so I started there. Then I went to clips and doing like clips from my uh, from my from my Twitch, like nice shots or like guns I like, stuff like that. And then like now I've gone on to like doing other things, like with just me talking because it, it works now. I don't I don't get it, but you know <laughs> it, it just works. <laughs> Well, you got all the eyes kind of, it's kind yeah, of the way exactly. I, I always thought about like YouTube is like you do like a big video to get some eyes on your content and then you start mm -hmm. giving them the other content to keep the people there. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess you kind of got that, you got your foot in the door and now you can kind of make mm -hmm. other content and, and, and things like that. So yeah, and it's what I do with it now, you know? Exactly. Right. Um, and obviously, I, you know, from what you were saying, there seems to have been a decent amount of people that came from your TikTok over to other platforms. Uh, you know, I can mm -hmm. see like, obviously the Twitch has had a lot of growth. Uh, I didn't know you did YouTube, but I can see you've got a decent amount of subscribers on there as well. And, and, and it kind of seems to be growing uh, well. <laughs> I have two videos on YouTube. Man. Yeah. Right. Two. Like <laughs> it's, so there's obviously like a good portion is, is coming over from uh, mm -hmm. these other platforms, which is what you want. Is there anything you did you think that specifically tried to, you know direct those viewers over to the other content or is it because a lot of it was twitch based like kind of what's your thoughts on that um i think it i think it was mostly because it was twitch based and people kind of liked the way that i reacted to things and like the way i talked so they wanted to see it live as of seeing you know highlights of clips mm -hmm. so they instead went over to my twitch to watch me live stream or went over to my youtube to watch my videos after if they don't have twitch and stuff like that sure for sure it's it's it is interesting i mean i, I i've been using tiktok for a while and i mm -hmm. can't quite get my head around it like uh i i mostly will just take clips from stream you know and, and upload them to tiktok and it's you know nice and easy throw a few hashtags on there and my experience mm -hmm. is that you know sometimes it's like 
100 to 200 views and then mm -hmm. every so often there's a video that just kind of pops like i had one hit mm -hmm. like i think got to like fifteen thousand, and i had one recently that's still gaining views from like two weeks ago that's up to like three or four thousand but like yep my when looking at it i'm like that i don't see what's better about one clip to the other it's just that it's kind of got hooked into that algorithm for whatever reason do you mm -hmm. have you kind of do you have a strategy for like maybe with hashtags or time of day that you're posting anything yeah, at all like that something along that line specifically like how you go about do you go about like deciding like this is the this is what I, the kind of video i want do you use trends you see already on TikTok and just kind of turn them around and kind of use them for your video because that's how I kind of go like I don't like I don't like a whole lot of videos because I want my mm -hmm. page to be as trendy as possible so I can get ideas to like incorporate into sure um, mm -hmm. how do you go about doing that so so one thing pumps doesn't matter what videos you like okay it'll still pop up on your FYP if you watch the whole video Okay. So that's how they that's how they kind of decide. If you watch the whole video, they're going to give you more like that. If you see okay. through it, they're going to kind of steer away from that. So I have um, random pimple popping ones on there because I been... <laughs> Yeah, cuz you, you watch them all. Garbage yeah. person. Exactly. 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 That's why all the WAP videos and makeup tutorials are popping up. Cuz I watch them to the end, baby. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um as far as me posting videos, um, at first, so when you're starting out, you have to follow the algorithm, right? So basically what the algorithm is, is there's set times. So like 1130 in the morning um, and eight o'clock at night are going to be the best times to post when you have, when you have like zero to 10,000 followers, that's where you want to post. No more than four hashtags, right? Two trending two that are um like relative to the post that's the algorithm okay um one thing that i've noticed and i've heard people say and i kind of it, it kind of hit me a little hard and i didn't know how to take it at first um but then when i started posting different things i realized but um nobody cares about clips right Sure. Unless it's something absolutely insane, nobody cares about clips because everyone looks at it and they're like, I can do that. And they scroll. Yeah. Right. They want to like you. They want to like your personality. They want to like who you are and where you come from, you know. So if you base yourself on that, you're way more likely to grow because you're competing with people that have your personality, which there shouldn't be too many like. But if you're posting clips, you're posting and competing against, you know, 40 million people who are all doing the same thing. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I see gameplay clips constantly popping up on my For You page. So, and, and often exactly. it's mostly Warzone I'm seeing, which seems to be the, the sort of popular thing on, mm -hmm. on TikTok now. But yeah, most of the time mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm going to skip through them as well. So that's interesting. That's good to know. And, and I think it's it's kind of you can kind of compare that to youtube as well where a lot of people back in the day were very like let's play focused and they would do full mm -hmm. episodes and nobody cares about that now like realistically no. it's not something that people watch so you need to adapt mm -hmm. uh your content so that's really interesting and uh that's good to know because there's a lot of things in there that i wasn't sure about with hashtags time of day that kind of thing so mm -hmm. uh we'll definitely get to that is the that is the exact algorithm yeah follow, follow that and i promise it might, like it might take some time but you will be more than fine it also takes more than 10 videos before one can get over a hundred thousand views really interesting mm -hmm. huh what uh does now you so the time does it matter like is it 11 30 across the board so like he's over in scotland is it still 11 30 for him or do they is there like a greenwich time for them to where you know <laughs> So, I mean, my, so my time is 1130 central. Like, that's where I'm like, okay, you know, I post now <laughs> and mm. that's fine. I'm not, I'm not sure about that, to be honest, because yeah. I know, I know TikTok really focuses on um, your like immediate surroundings. So um, like me, for instance, um, I live in the Houston area. So if I post the first, you know, 5,000 people that aren't following me are going to be from the Houston area. Oh. So I would probably, I'm almost like 90% sure that it should go off your time. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, yeah, especially when you think about like 
one of the things that I noticed a growth, at least for my Twitch channel, was that before I used to be working during the day, I would get home and around like 6 p.m. Eastern, I'd start streaming and then go like late. Um, but I always felt, and this was just like kind of in my head, but I always felt like I was potentially losing the opportunity of gaining new viewership because fundamentally, for anyone else on the East Coast, anyone in my time zone, you're probably at work dying to get home to play a game. When you mm. go home, the first thing you're going to do is maybe fire up the game and not necessarily fire up Twitch. What people are going to do is on their lunch break, they're going to fire up Twitch, you know, or if they have like a down like day at work and they have a kind of job where they can just sit around, they might fire it up. And I always thought like, at least for someone in my time zone, that if I could take advantage of like the, the mid lunch day crowd through, and also that it captures the evening crowd in the EU that like, yeah, it makes sense. You figure 1130, it's just whatever time you're in, especially if it's going to be so regionalized as like focusing on uh, viewers in your area that you're getting people who are just starting, who've started their work day, but are now starting a period where they probably have a half hour to an hour lunch. Probably they got a chance to just like scroll through Twitter, scroll through TikTok, scroll through their socials. And then you figure at like 830 in the evening, they've had dinner, you know, they've gotten home from work, you know, and but it's like not before bed, depending on like when people turn in. So you, you, those are kind of like those sweet spots. I would imagine it probably does extend like to each individual person locally, you know, like so probably 1130 a.m. for Condi, even though he's in the you know UK, like would make sense because mm -hmm. you'd be capturing those those people who are local to you. But like, you know, think about when other people would be watching. When are when were you most watching if you weren't streaming full time? Um, for mm -hmm. me, it was def. I I always watched Condi on my lunch break. Like that 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 was that was the thing for me. That that's what I looked forward to every day because it was like the thing that I I knew I had time off. I could go to my office. I could de stress and I could just like hang out and eat good food and have good time, like watching somebody that was cool. Um, and I I, I, I feel like that's got to be the same for most people, right? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It's it's. I think that's one of the reasons that people say like schedule on Twitch is so important. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so people know when to expect you. And I'm the worst for it. Like I, I change mine up every other day. Like I'm the absolute worst for that. So, but yeah, I mean, l doing that little bit of research to work out when your your viewers are going to be there to watch is, uh, I think, very a very valuable thing to do. Um, mm -hmm. So, Corpy, I want to ask a few more questions, if you don't mind. I just want to kind of dive yeah. into this. So, you mentioned about uh, a record you had for a stream. Can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about that and what, what that entailed and how you managed it? Um, it entailed sadness, <laughs> um, re regret, um, a lot of energy drinks. Um, no, it was, dude, it was, honestly, it was so much fun. Um, it was me and, um, hold on. Me and this dude right there that's passed out <laughs> over there. <laughs> but um, we uh, we attempted it. We we were both really really small at the time. I think I had like I had just hit affiliate. He had just hit affiliate. Um, I had like fifty two followers. I think he had like fifty three, something like that. And we were just like, dude, what can we do that'll like stand out? Like, what can we do that's fun, that'll stand out, where we can be like, boom. And we saw this little thing where this dude attempted it and got 161 hours. And it was like, he went from 100 followers to 10,000. So we were like, oh, <laughs> like, why can't, you know, why can't we do that? You know, why can't that be me? So um, we attempted it once and my PC crashed at oh, damn. 40 hours. Oh, no. And I almost cried. Uh, it was a rough time. But um, the second time we did it, we got a streaming PC played on it that way and we got to 163 hours and ended up beating the record and i believe in should be like a couple days now we'll be getting the plaque and the book that has our name in it and everything like that so oh that's great so this excited. is the guinness book of world records by the way just yeah yeah it's, it's case the you guinness guys were wondering <laughs> oh, yeah. that's why it's taken so long for us to get it because if you want it done in five days, it costs a cool, uh, I think it's like $12,000. Oh, so shit. So I was like, yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, I can wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, but it was the most fun I've had 
it like it, it was really just an absolute blast and like the people that stayed there like we had people that were there for like 48 72 hours straight and i was just like you go to bed <laughs> like, <laughs> why are you still here and they're like why are you awake <laughs> um, but if you if you go like on um, when you look at my tiktok and see like the first ones you can see so i'm like yo it's hour one we're having a great time and then i'm like yo it's hour five we're having a great time and then it gets to like hey guys it's hour 30 <laughs> we're dying <laughs> yeah like i think in one of them i'm like please help me <laughs> like, dude, i also was, i have to imagine that like hope against hope you're praying that like windows isn't like hey want to do an update <laughs> yeah right <laughs> dude, so the pc um so the the record was 161 hours and 13 minutes right we were like there was so there was an unconfirmed record where they went for 200 hours um come to find out they did stuff so they disqualified themselves and like they went to sleep on it and stuff like that so we were gonna go for 210 was our original just to be like, safe this is what we're gonna hit yeah and our pc crashed at 163 hours and we were like oh, did we not get it <laughs> like do we we were we were upset upset and like everyone in the stream was upset but come to find out we did actually get it we were the only ones that followed the rules went by and everything like that so it was it, ugh, it was a rough did, time did, so did you stream this all on your channel right mm -hmm. this was all did on all help on my you, channel. this help your buddy as well or no not as much um, <laughs> so we didn't get you no know, 10,000 followers you know? <laughs> um, we got nowhere close to it it was it was fun i wouldn't trade it for anything but we got practically no growth. Oh, right. whatsoever. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was it was practically nothing, man. I think um, I appreciate everyone that did follow, but I believe uh, we gained about like twenty followers from it. So this is a rough time, man. You know. So if I do <laughs> like, a thousand hours, yeah. twenty oh. few followers per two hundred. Okay, yeah. I'm just doing the math here. Hey, dude, I'm saying, man. If you want to go for it, go for it. <laughs> like, I'll, I'm going to be over here. I'll, I'll, I'll send you good vibes and pray for you, man. <laughs> Dude, I can't imagine. I did a... Uh... I did an 18 hour stream when the, the new raid came out in Destiny 2 to try and beat it on day one. And I was a shell. I, after 18 hours, I was just a mess, dude. Like uh, the, the thought of a 24 terrifies me. Like I, I don't think I'll ever manage a 24. Yeah, you're so a little baby that day shift. for sure. <laughs> I pulled the first shift and I went for 35. Oh shit. At the end of it, I literally had to go lay down because I was about to throw up. Yeah, like that's that's how much it messed with me for like it, it literally it pushed me to the point where I was like, you know, maybe streaming isn't for me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's for me. Damn. I don't know. And now now people are like, yo, do a 24 hour stream. And I'm like, mm -mm, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> mm -mm. I've checked that box a few times. <laughs> yeah. Mill million channel points and we'll talk. Yeah, about yeah <laughs> that's fair. So uh, can I ask how, how did you kind of prepare for it? Like, is there anything you kind of did to get ready? And, and how was the recovery afterwards? Like how long before you felt human again after you were done? How we prepared for it is we were like, hey man, you want to do this? Yeah. Next day started it. Oh shit. It <laughs> and then we were like, man, that sucks. And then we waited for a capture card to come in for two days and we're like, all right, let's use this PC as a streaming PC. We we're like, all right, this is dope. And then we bought like a 20 pack of monster and just went at it, man. That was it. That was all the preparation. That's we crazy. <laughs> it's amazing. You were still able to actually get through it with just like, just going for it. Like, yeah, that's oh, awesome. you want to talk about being, being dead in a shell? Yeah. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> and the recovery was, um, uh, we ended it like I think it was like July seventeenth. I think I woke up um, in August, I believe, like somewhere <laughs> around there. <laughs> it, was, it was that bad, man. Yeah, no, I can't say I'm surprised. I mean, again, I'm I'm I've definitely not experienced in in that kind of length of stream. But after mm -hmm. done a couple of eighteen hour streams, like yeah, I was not in a good position at the end of that eighteen hours. Like I was ready to just yeah. pass out. So I mean, we I, took we took shifts doing it. 
So like I would do an amount, he would do an amount, and we would just switch off. But um, dude, at the end of it, it was like, all right, man, I've been streaming for an hour. He's like, all right, and he would wake up and come stream for an hour, and he's like, all right, man, I've been streaming for an hour. <laughs> like, dude, we're just just dead, like straight like hour. I would say like one fifty, we were just dead. But then, I mean, when it hit one sixty, we were like wide awake and just pumped because we were like, dude, we're an hour away from being done. <laughs> Yeah, no, you get that second win towards the end. Oh yeah, oh, dude. Definitely. Yeah, well done. I mean, it's a it's a hell of an achievement that not an awful lot of people are gonna be able to claim. So, good on you there. Um, I'm trying to think what else we can kind of get into. Like, uh, has your so since you kind of had the success on TikTok, and you obviously you mentioned mm -hmm. that there was this initial kind of huge bump to your viewership on twitch and then it sort of started to settle down have you changed up your content at all since then i mean i know you said you're not doing these like 24 hour long huge streams anymore but has anything else changed about your content that you're doing on a sort of daily basis um i mean yeah because like now i'm able to like i'm hosting you know private matches with viewers and just playing around doing like knives only with like 40 people in there and like stuff like that you know just just goofball stuff um mostly just playing around playing with viewers because like i can now you know there's gotcha. actually people watching to come <laughs> in and play so it's it's great hell I'm yeah kind of changing it up that way but like mostly mostly everything stayed the same you know i'm still the same person i'm not you know i haven't i have i haven't changed yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that's what you want yeah that's what you want for sure mm -hmm. awesome well thank you for letting us you know uh kind of pick your brain on all that stuff um oh dude of course yeah it's really really good shall we talk some of the the other twitch news things that have been going on this week yeah 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 unless anyone's else got anything else before we jump on sounds yeah. good right so a few little uh kind of just a couple of news bits that i thought would be interesting to discuss uh the first one is uh twitch sings is going to be getting closed down uh i don't know if you guys have done much twitch sings it's something i used to do a little bit and i still jump into from time to time uh, if you're not familiar, Twitch Sings is like a karaoke uh, game software that's that's linked in and, and really built into Twitch. It lets you do uh, karaoke versions of songs that are up there. It gives you the lyrics. It lets you duet with people and kind of um, create these um, clips and videos of, of you singing these songs. Uh, it's been around for a couple of years, I think. Um, and I know, I know for a fact that there's a, quite a a tight-knit um very very passionate community based around the game uh that has yeah that has they've announced it's going to be closing down so to to run through it here it says on december yeah. 1st they're going to begin removing clips and videos um and then on january 1st the game will end completely um the interesting quote that they put in here is that they're going to be taking the time to invest in broader tools and services that will help support and grow the entire music community on twitch uh, so a few things to dive into there. Have any of you guys done Twitch things? I know, I think you have humps in the past, right? What we got going on here? <laughs> are you going to confirm or deny that? <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to show? Isn't that show? Oh, no. I have to click on it. Oh, hang on, this is going. Oh, well, don't click. Don't click on it. <laughs> <laughs> It was just a, it was just, it was a, oh, it was dear a, God. it was a Twitch click from Twitch click, Twitch clip from, uh, one of our duets that we did. So yes, I've done Twitch things a couple of times. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I guess okay. that, that's the short answer. <laughs> um, well, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. I, I actually used to really, really enjoy Twitch things. I've got to say, I did kind of see this coming. Uh, they went through like a phase, like I had notifications on for their Twitter and every time they added new, uh, music, I would... I, I would jump on and kind of see what what new stuff but i noticed that they hadn't tweeted anything for like six months and i kind of had a feeling that this was coming but um i think the 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 sort of first of all the community is not happy about it i don't know if any of you had a chance to read through the replies on the tweets um but a lot of people are very upset that twitch very is very upset yeah, yeah. Uh, again, I know. I mean, yeah, that's like people's like. I mean, there's people that like that's what they stream. You know, like, yes. that's what they built their stream on was Twitch yeah. Sing. Yeah, there, there's a there's a bunch of streamers that I follow that I met through Twitch Sings, and that's all they do. They just stream Twitch Sings. Um, so well, definitely, it's rough. it's rough too because you figure like for anyone who for anyone who sees themselves as like um 
you know, as a content creator where they're, they're, they view their biggest talent being their voice, if they're not a singer songwriter that produces like, you know, um, original music themselves, but just really excels at, at, at singing. I mean, because you figure like, you know, anyone who is in a chorus or in a choral group, you know, like you're, you're singing composed music that someone else wrote. That's, that's still an admirable, like extremely talented endeavor, but like, I'm sure there's plenty of people who are streaming through like streaming with Twitch things in mind. If they're not like, they don't have a back catalog of like original songs that they're doing. This mean this is shutting the door on them doing anything on Twitch musically, because I mean, th good luck finding something that you can continue to do this with that isn't already going to be licensed in some way. Uh, and then they have to yep. worry about DMCA claims. This is this afforded people the opportunity to share in a creative experience that was rooted in music, um, lean into a talent that clearly they've worked really hard to cultivate. And then at the same time, um, to do it in a way that allowed them to tap into to sort of popular culture via, you know, notable music that they're not going to have unless I mean, we don't know. I think the most interesting thing about that quote is broader tools and services that help support and grow the entire music community on Twitch. Yeah. To what me, I mean? almost wonder what you guys think that means, because for me, it it seems to hint at, but not necessarily imply that with all this like DMCA stuff that's been going on with, you know, like people's VODs and, and clips being, you know, uh, getting struck with claims that maybe they'll be doing something to somehow afford licensed music, like a place on the platform that just maybe not in the form of Twitch sings. But So it's interesting because I, I don't know quite how to take that statement. Part of me thinks they're just saying that to uh to kind of save face and say like mm. oh yeah we're investing in other things like don't worry about it right clearly obviously they were licensing hundreds of songs on twitch things that they've decided they no longer want to pay the licensing for um yeah. which makes sense i understand you know uh, there's not certainly not a uh a huge community of people using twitch things but there is a very dedicated community using it um to me my first thought didn't go to the whole DMCA licensed music for stream. The fact that they said the entire music community makes me think, I mean, I guess it could still be around that. I'm thinking about other streamers who their content is music, right? Um, there's a lot, a lot of streamers, DJs. DJs, there's a, you know, there's like uh, the 8-bit drummer. There's, there's, there's a few that I follow that, you know, play like piano and they, they can improvise music and they do covers of video game music or whatever. Um, I guess that I took it as they're going to invest in tools to help those that community. But that could still relate, I guess, if they are able to say, well, here's a bunch of licensed music that you can play on stream your own versions of or whatever uh, without risk of DMCA. I don't really know. Uh, I saw a lot of people in the, 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 the thread on Twitter saying they hope that they come back with a new version of Twitch Sings, which I think is a pipe dream and is not going to happen. No, uh, no. I feel like Twitch decided like this is not for us anymore. And th why would they close it just to bring it back? Like, I just don't think that's the case. I know there is a lot of um, like petitions and stuff and hashtags to save Twitch Sings, but I think it seems like Twitch has made up their mind on it and uh, they're going to be getting rid. Um, a comment in chat here, someone Dob says, thinking from a marketing aspect, if someone could make a similar thing and get the promotional stuff figured out, they could make a big move to be the next sort of Twitch things. Um, I don't know what you guys think. To me, I, I don't think it's worth it probably for a company because Twitch things wasn't pulling in huge numbers and that's, that's expensive. If, if Twitch things was pulling in numbers, A, Twitch wouldn't get rid of it. Yeah, and that that'd be the only reason why a different company would come in and kind of swoop in and kind of get in that market. But since they weren't, there's really there's nothing to gain from it other than a small community, which you know, valuable community, but small nonetheless. And, and on the business side of it, not worth the effort. Yeah, it's um, it, it's interesting, and I I don't think we'll see a competitor to Twitch things appear. Um, and it is sad, like um. Because it was, it was just kind of a fun thing to do with your community from time to time. Um, and there was occasionally, you know, some of the, the big streamers would jump in for a little while. So, um, yeah, it's definitely sad to see it go. Uh, any other thoughts on that, on, on what you think Twitch could do with with the broader tools? Let us use music. 
Yes, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that would be nice. Did uh, Corby did the DMC? We saw that. Like, that's weird because they don't. I I still like everyone that I follow. I'll go on their thing. I'll go on their channel whenever they're streaming. Like, they just don't give a shit anymore. Like, tons I still, of people are still listening to. Everyone's still using music. like copyright yeah. music. And it's just like, so I don't know if you saw somebody I know on Twitter actually received a live copyright strike. Oh shit. Um, I, I should have looked up the tweet before the podcast, but they, they tweeted that they received a live, uh, copyright strike for something they watched, I think on their stream. Um, so clearly this is starting now where you could be potentially hit with live strikes. Even if you delete your VOD, it, there's a chance that you could get hit with a strike. I guess I the way I... One. You did. You, you got hit with one? So this is what I was going to ask you, yeah. So Alive. when was that? During the world record stream. Right, okay. So a few months guess back I, then. Guess what, guess what I was doing to get it. <laughs> I don't know. I was playing Geometry Dash. And the song that was in Geometry Dash got copyright strike. Right. Oh, man. Music yeah, in the game. I was like, yeah. are, you, are you serious? And so I was like, well, there goes that. Looks like we're playing Call of Duty for another 100 hours. That's crazy. So, because this is what worries me with, like, Tony Hawk and stuff. Like, is the music licensed? Are you going to get hit with something from the soundtrack of Tony Hawk? I just mm -hmm. deleted that VOD right now. <laughs> I, yeah. I meant to do I, I planned on deleting it. I, I knew I was going to have to because of the music that it plays. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But talking about it reminded me of it, so I just deleted that VOD. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think some people got in got into some issue with, like, GTA VODs because of, like, the, the licensed music that would play on the radio. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in grand theft auto i mean like i guess the way i look at it is for the people that are there was the initial panic like a couple months ago and everyone was like deleting clips and deleting vods and you know um there was like this this rush to to get shit under control and then slowly but surely you know people are back to just like listening to whatever they want i the way i look at it is you know yeah i could go get in my car and you know drive around for like the next year without a seatbelt on would i necessarily need it <laughs> not necessarily but i'd like to have it you just know like i'd case. like to just be safe um so for me it's like I, i'm looking at the stream in in the same light like i i could probably keep going a bit delete all my vods don't keep any clips turn turn clips off so that people can't clip stuff from the channel but like why I, I desperately want to listen to my own stuff again, but like, why risk it? Like, I just don't see if you're that, if you're really committed to your channel, there's just no point in taking a chance. Uh, epidemic, epidemic sounds. Right. If, have you heard of them before? Uh, yeah, I've heard of them. <laughs> yeah, very, we, a lot, a lot of us, I think we all use, I think, Krog, you use it too, Pretzel, right? Uh, I haven't used Pretzel in a long time. Actually, would I... Uh, I think I only used it for a stream or two, and then I just I couldn't stand really the selection of the music that was there. Um, I have my channel whitelisted with uh, Chill Hop Radio, um, so this if the channel that's on YouTube that like everybody it's like a little anime gif of like a raccoon reading or like a girl studying, like um, they you can whitelist your YouTube channel or your Twitch channel and um, use their discography of stuff on stream. And as long as you have like pre-approved yourself with them, uh, you will not get a DMCA strike. So I haven't had any issue with any of the content that I've um, either clipped or saved or whatever. You just have to do it with attribution. So in the information panel below your stream, uh, you have to credit them and link back to they have they have a graphic that you use and then you link back to their page. Um, but I've I've either used them or I've like found reputable sources through spotify that are verified as being like clean to use on stream um permissions explicitly like in writing that have been published by like the artist and then i just made my own playlist so sometimes i've done that but generally i'm i've just been kind of like running off of like this larger suite of the chill hop stuff because i don't I, I don't mind if i mean I, I don't care if it's copyright free or not copyright it's just as long as it sounds good to me and i'm, I'm i lean more towards like my musical taste is more towards like hip-hop and um, rap and that's kind of mainly what i like to listen to and a lot of the copyright free stuff that i found it's just like a lot of lo-fi chill stuff which is fine and like i can be in that mood but not really when i'm like gaming and mm -hmm. so pretzel i found that their hip-hop station that they have is actually pretty good and it says it has like 500 songs in that playlist 
but I swear I hear the same stuff over and over and over again. So I personally get tired of it. Um, so that's why <laughs> I got two feeds. <laughs> Stream hears, hears Pretzel, I hear Spotify. <laughs> so people are like, oh man, this song's pretty bopping. And I have to like look I'm like, oh, you're listening to that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't be a, don't be a, don't be a don't cyber be a, bully. Don't be a cyber bully. <laughs> How have you found that experience of like having a different feed of audio to your stream? Has it been, has it caused I, any weird? No, you're just. No, I mean, the only time it's kind of not really awkward, but it comes in the question, I guess, is if someone's like, oh, what song is that? Or like, this is actually sounds pretty good. Or like, I'm really vibing to this. And I'm like, I'm, I'm glad you are. I'm, I'm listening to Logic <laughs> right now. <laughs> you so are? I've, I've been, I've been on Pretzel for a while, um, since kind of before the big DMCA thing. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, my Twitter got hit with the DMCA and banned about a year back. So um, I uh, I moved to Pretzel for, for all DMCA free stuff or DMCA safe music. And uh, I, I, I appreciate what you're saying when you don't like the selection on there. I've spent so much time combing through it that I've, I'm pretty happy with the playlist I've kind of put together. Um, but I use it for everything now. So like I'll use audio from that for YouTube. I'll use audio for that for like little sound clips in the, the stream like mm -hmm. I, i'm i'm pretty happy with what i've found on it um but it just comes down to your own taste right of, of what you prefer to to use and not use um but it is interesting and i think the 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 twitch things closure has got to be related to that you know with the licensing costs and things um i wonder if you were to just look at the catalog that twitch sings has and just make a playlist with that music if that would get you know flagged for dmca i think it was i think they actually had wording in it that says you can stream these music but it has to be from the twitch sings from twitch app. sings yeah makes probably, sense probably um yeah it's it's certainly interesting again I, i'm sad to see twitch things go but you know maybe twitch will come out with something new and, and interesting in the future again i know that people a lot of people want to see twitch do something about this the important thing to remember is it's it's not really twitch's fault um right. you know these these copyright laws are from a long time ago and they're not really um what's the word i'm looking for they're not really up to date with the the, the 20 way years the internet old is now. <laughs> yeah right they're not contemporary with how we use the internet and how we use content um Granted, Huzzah. yes, I appreciate Limewire. Amazon that's has when a lot of money. Came out. <laughs> Napster, that's when this shit came out. <laughs> yeah, um, you know they're fighting against very outdated laws. He's but, in be like, "What's know. Napster?" <laughs> I, I do. I've got to say, I do agree with copyright overall. You know, I still think you shouldn't be able to uh, to to just use someone else's content and make money from it. Um, but there needs to be, like, you know, with with video games, there's kind of an unwritten rule that you know devs and publishers don't strike creators because it's good marketing for them um and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it's interesting nonetheless um moving on to the the next sort of little bit of news uh, which is something that i was made aware of uh, just this past week uh twitch is doing a new thing to help affiliates with emotes so i'm going to read the little uh blurb that they gave us here so they said uh, we know using emotes is a great way to reward and engage your community we also know that finding an artist or creating your own emotes can be a daunting task, especially when we're just starting out. So to help you get started, we're offering 120 emotes that you're free to use in addition to any custom emotes you make in the future. Um, in this article, this sort of blog, they also include some tips and tricks for making your own emotes. But yeah, they're basically just opening up this, I don't know if you call it a library of emotes, but it's 120 emotes that you can just, as soon as you're affiliated, you can just grab them. And, and start using them in your channel um they say 120 but i believe that includes all the different color variations so there's not actually yeah. 120 but there's like different color variations of each one um kind of a, an interesting thing i didn't think i don't think anybody really saw this coming necessarily but um i don't know what do you guys think about it i think it's good i mean it, it, it definitely is easy to grab and go and pick i mean it, it's not going to be you know stream specific but then again i feel like most first emotes you get when you hit affiliate aren't necessarily unless you already have something planned aren't necessarily like this is who i am emote type of move because i feel like if you like mm -hmm. depending on how long you've been streaming or you know how long it took you to get affiliate you you probably don't even really know who you are in terms of like this is what my stream is about and this is how my emotes because like a lot of your like your condi your emote specific and both of you guys is using grogs 
um they're like very specific to you guys and they came from streaming like you're with emo you're nova bomb with emo you know what i mean like that probably wasn't your first emo that you you uploaded or unless if it was i guess you've been whiffing emotes a lot longer than i thought you were <laughs> uh, whiffing nova bombs anyway <laughs> no no you're right it definitely wasn't the first again obviously when i was affiliated it was like you only got three and it was one yeah. emote per tier of sub right so really i was only looking at one emote when i got affiliated anyway because it's like well you know no one's gonna tier two tier three yeah, sub tier, yeah like <laughs> you know um for these emotes so uh obviously i kind of had time to grow with it as it was like hey now you can have up to five tier one emotes it's like okay by that time you got a bit of experience and kind of knowing what you want and, and everything like that um but yeah i mean i think this is this is great i mean it maybe takes the pressure off those people that feel like i'm affiliated now and i need to get these emotes done and i have to try and reach out to artists off of twitch or try and do it myself and um obviously that option is still there but it's kind of cool um not really a move i was expecting twitch to do but it's just another mm. little thing to help new affiliates uh get on their feet and get started um yeah i think one of the coolest things about it is probably people who have just hit affiliate that needs sub badges might get some traction out of it just as a stopgap mm -hmm. for the short term because a lot of these um as connie mentioned there's like 120 some but of those there's not nearly as many emotes but a lot of them are in different colorways so you could find one that's of interest to you uh i dropped the link in chat that connie had posted into our our discord earlier um that links you to the article and the emotes themselves but if you What's cool about it is that it is kind of this rainbow of colors, so you could use those as your one month, three month, six month, nine month, et cetera, um, if you just need something as filler and can't commission something quickly. You could just use them as like, here's my five. Um, but I mean, I feel like the sub badge is like the very first thing that I feel like you kind of feel, or at least I felt pressured to have um, right away, because it's like, that's the thing that if anyone is gonna sub to you and you're brand new, and of course you want your first like 10 subs uh they get that founder badge and you know that's that's really cool but it'd be nice to have something there next to their name so just having an icon that you can tap into that's already like got the colors figured out for you that seems like a decent place to start for a lot of folks yeah i would say with the emotes as well like it's a really really great option for when you like first hit affiliate but don't make that your permanent solution oh yeah you know, like oh, yeah, you yeah, want, yeah. you want personalized things for yourself. So, and if, even if you want to personalize, I mean, they're PNGs. So, I mean, you can throw them in to Photoshop oh, okay. or you know, whatever you use and you can mm -hmm. add something. I mean, I'm imagining, you know, if you just like this character, you can just, you know, put Corpy underneath mm -hmm. it or something. I don't know. But I mean, there, you can do more with them oh, okay. without having okay. to work with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wait, so, so I need a new emote? Is that what no, you're no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying you need saying if you're corpy no <laughs> it's uh i think it's quite good as well like because particularly with when, with a brand new affiliate you still have to go through this approval period for emotes um mm -hmm. i'm hoping for these universal ones you don't have to go through that anymore so they they changed so. yeah it's they changed obviously now if you've been an affiliate and you've streamed don't quote me on this i think it's 60 days 60 unique streams as an affiliate and you're in good standing quote unquote with twitch mm -hmm. then you get these instant approval which is amazing like we just got two uh, new emotes i thought it was just a blanket all no, affiliates. See, get, oh i okay. learned this recently right mm -hmm. so because we discussed it on the podcast and we were like oh man people are gonna upload crazy shit and uh but like that's not really the way it works uh, i mean technically you could still get through your 60 days and then upload whatever the fuck you want and you know get in trouble but um yeah, you have to be in good standing and have 60 unique streams as an affiliate. So you're talking bare minimum like two months of, yeah. as an affiliate of streaming every day um, before you get the instant approval. And it is great. Like I, I, We had two new emotes. I uploaded them right before I went live. It took maybe half an hour where they were sometimes not showing and then eventually they just they started working. Uh, but it, obviously a far cry from waiting four weeks to have them approved oh, yeah. before. Um, 30 minutes that even seems long because i know me and grog we both uploaded like uh he uploaded when he got his lurk emote and it immediately all we had to do is refresh the stream and it was there well and, yeah. so mine were approved when i made that that scissors emote it the automatically uploaded as well they, they were approved immediately <laughs> i just mean there was times where you would type in it would just show us the text 
and the emote didn't work yeah but maybe twitch was having an off day i don't know maybe it was just being weird i um, think that was just like a hiccup because dolly on his channel had a ton mm -hmm. of issues where like his stuff had been approved for a couple months and had just been there and then like his it just wasn't showing like it was just the text only for some reason but i think that was also around the same time that cloudfire um like the competitor to aws uh, amazon web services for for hosting for dns stuff when cloudfire went down and like gmail was off and, and discord was off and like a bunch of websites were out because like there was this major internet outage i think that was related maybe in some way from like a hosting standpoint the like graphics just weren't coming through it could be that yeah it could be um but it's interesting and, and i think maybe now because you know if you're in the situation where hey i just hit affiliate today maybe i do already have my emotes maybe i don't you know maybe i still need to reach out to an artist maybe i've been prepared and i've got that that done obviously yeah you can upload those emotes and wait however long for them to be approved but maybe if you don't have them yet you can just i assume instantly activate these ones because why would they need to be approved if they're built right. into Twitch, right? And mm -hmm. then you can have emotes while you wait on those ones being made by an artist or whatever. Like it's, I think it's an interesting, um, it's an interesting move by Twitch to to add this, but it's it's kind of nice. It helps out uh, a little bit. I haven't seen them be used anywhere yet, but they can, I feel like it was kept quite under the radar. It was somebody I know is friends with a person that designed the emotes for Twitch, so that's kind of how I heard about it and was linked through the. Uh, to the twitter thread um but hey twitch is doing something at least so that's that's kind of good uh the last bit of news that i wanted to uh just briefly talk about which i thought was interesting um obviously the the way the the the, the internet has gone recently we've seen a lot of big creators sign uh contracts to different platforms and, and all this so the wwe has announced that they are officially banning their stars from signing contracts on third-party sites such as YouTube, Twitch, and TikTok. Uh, they've been given 30 days to cease working with third parties independently because it was, quote, too detrimental to the company. Um, so I just kind of wanted to get your thoughts on this and kind of, uh, yeah, really just talk about it a little Where bit. Where is this coming <coughs> from? It makes zero sense. <laughs> zero sense. <laughs> I, I am upset. I am upset because I was looking forward to one day in my life seeing Stone Cold <laughs> dream on twitch <laughs> right it's it's a it's a Why? weird move so and it's it's so weird because like in the wording on there is because like it's it, it it says like officially banning their stars from signing contracts so what if they don't sign contracts can they just stream? but is a is a partner contract you know maybe they're not part, the partner is contracted yeah. i guess affiliate is too yeah yeah, we, yeah there's a contract. technically yeah. i guess yeah. it's interesting i mean i'm never i'm never gonna see that stone cold steve austin cold stone creamery you know <laughs> crossover <laughs> that i've been dying dying to see happen dude that I, would I, be I, so oh my god <laughs> yeah i know right what has it like, holy shit <laughs> you contact somebody right now. <laughs> i know i know it's it's really a million dollar idea that that clearly uh, clearly, they the WWE wants nothing to do with. <laughs> I think that the the bullshit line is too detrimental to our company. Really, that I to me feels like code for we're not getting our cut. We're we're not we're not we're missing out on potential money making yeah. opportunity. And I I don't foresee like any of these uh, wrestling stars like stop like i still see partnerships and and um co-sponsorships happening in the future you'll probably still st see people you know rep repping state farm or like some nissan ultima or like whatever yeah. but it's gonna be through the wwe having arranged it and them taking their cut and exactly. really this just seems like them putting handcuffs on their staff to be like no you you work for us and us alone and we will decide you know how you get you know parceled out to this or that you know like co-sponsor um super shitty i think it's crazy the thought of them saying like hey you can't sign a deal with with tiktok because those one minute videos that you're making it's too much taking too much time away from the rest <laughs> you know like it's a hundred percent they're looking for their cut like you're saying Grog. oh yeah and like like grog said like i could see even wwe getting in on it later on once they mm, work if they sure. get a deal with twitch and they're like, all right. And then this big announcement comes like, hey, WWE, we're going to be on Twitch. You can see this person, this person, this person, this person. 
and it, but then it'll be underneath the WWE umbrella versus you know. So you think they're contract. they're they're laying the groundwork now for something like that in the future, possibly? I think so. It gets everybody off of their personal accounts, and then they'll make it into a WWE like umbrella account. I just hope they're doing this brewery thing, man. Like, <laughs> I'm, I am really stuck, stuck on, on that man. idea there. <laughs> I am stuck on that. Yo, I actually, I uh, fun fact about Corpy, I uh, wrestled and beat someone who uh, wrestled and beat Stone Cold. Really? Oh shit! <laughs> so in a way, you beat Stone Cold. Exactly. That's what I thought everybody. <laughs> Damn. by transitive properties yeah yep, we yep, found yep. our title for the podcast i think we're, we're... <laughs> Dude, i'm in, basically um... better than Cole. <laughs> Cole. Dude, it was in a it was in basic training for the army there was a there's a dude that went there and he's an ex wrestler as well so his name is andy levine right you can look him up on google um but he was in my basic uh my basic training class and they have like the combatives tournaments and everything. Oh, and he went from wrestling to play for the Miami Dolphins, by the way. This dude's oh, massive. Okay. Yeah, this dude, absolutely massive. Um I wrestled like all throughout my life and all that stuff. So I was like I was ready. And they had a combatives tournament and I had to go up against them. I've never been more scared in my entire life going up against like I'm six foot four and two forty, right? So like I'm a big dude. This man was like six foot nine and a solid like 350 so i'm just like oh my god here we go (laughs) terrible that's how condy would look at you no 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 (laughs) he's like five two i'm five nine oh my god please (laughs) um five nine yeah that's the same thing right on stilts maybe <laughs> anything under six foot is like eh, right yeah right yeah <laughs> <laughs> i feel you brother what's up <laughs> anyway hey, after six foot it doesn't matter anymore you're just like yeah i might be six two i might be six five i could be six nine i don't know <laughs> <laughs> all looks the same to me from down here yeah <laughs> <laughs> finally <laughs> <laughs> right moving oh. swiftly on um <laughs> well here's here's something i was thinking about while while we were talking about it i think that what strikes me as so outrageous is that if you were to take this approach from the wwe and apply it to because these these are these are athletes they they it is a sport i mean we i mean wrestling is you know a a choreographed like soap opera i mean on on the highest form it is a it is a wonderful narrative of like this you know like crazy Wait, tapestry of story I, I, WWE, uh, wwe wrestling not like yeah, actual yeah. wrestling no yeah yeah, yeah. Re- but i mean like wwe is fake <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no 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 but i mean like <laughs> earmuffs there's, earmuffs <laughs> there's this rich narrative at play but the the thing is that they they are still highly trained they still work out they they are athletes they it is a sport right and the thing is, if you were to take this and transport it to any other sport, imagine going to the NBA and say, NBA says, you know what, you can't do any Nike deals without us. You can't do, you know, um, let's go to let's go to American soccer. You can't do any like Adidas deals, you know, without us. Like any other sports league um, or field in the world doesn't have this kind of like like leash on their players. Um, and that's just wild to me that they would, I don't, I mean, I guess it must, they must have done something in the contracts like that. They must've been really savvy in the contracts from a while ago to have it worded in such a way that they could make this move now and not have it, you know, cause any sort of flack with like people saying, well, that's, 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 you know, you can't do that. Um, yeah. Well, I haven't done much follow-up. I don't know if there's been much pushback from, uh you know any of the 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 people involved um i'm wondering if it's going to set a precedent for other you know uh you know sports companies that you know have players on contract even down to like you know music publishers record labels because there's a lot of uh, music artists that stream on twitch that are very successful and and have large audiences you know is are these music labels going to start trying to get in on it does it set a precedent for these companies i can see music labels and... getting on that as fast as humanly possible i mean especially like newer artists that don't have a grasp or the uh clout to kind of 
for run the, the show and have their own contracts and understanding, you know, this is my music type of thing. Yeah. Like a lot of them, like when they first sign and stuff, like the record label owns your shit. You know yeah. What I mean, like they don't, you, you play, you play it because they let you play it and because they get money out of it. But if you were to choose to go and stream you, your music, I mean, I can, I can see music labels getting on that shit. Well, and there's a lot of folks who their livelihood isn't just the, the music they make or the sports they play, but they, they draw a lot of their revenue from sponsorships, mm -hmm. you know? So you figure that, I mean, even musicians you, with musicians, you know, they're sponsored by a, like guitar pedals or, you know, they, there's an amp company that they rep or, you know, guitar picks or, you know, like, you know, strings for, I mean, like you name it, whatever it is, whatever instrument it is, whatever field it is, you know, you can be a sponsor for so many different things. And sure. um, I just, it it seems like that's just a, it, that line in particular, too detrimental to her company is just such a throwaway bullshit line. It's just double speak. And it yeah. really is just covering up for the fact that we're not getting our cut. Uh, and they just, you know, want to be controlling of, you know, who these people make deals with, but like they own them. Uh, not just like, you know, they own a contract with these people, but they own them in terms of like what they can do as people. And I think that's kind of fucked. Yeah. I mean, I think as we see Twitch and, and content creation become more and more mainstream, there's going to be more of that. I mean, we know that uh, when Ninja moved to Mixer, one of his big uh, reasons, according to him, was because Twitch was trying to block deals that he had going you know he has he has sneakers now i think twitch was trying to get in on that and trying to stop that from happening with you know just between you know tyler blevins and nike or whoever it is i, I don't actually know adidas something like that so you know clearly there are you know the, these companies are as it becomes bigger and there's more sponsorship and more money involved uh this is going to be something we'll probably see again um but it sucks to see it it definitely sucks to see it um I had a quick thought as well. Did you guys see that uh, watch parties are now available uh, globally? I did. I saw that. Yeah. Mm. I so I haven't done that before. I, I don't think I know Kibbles has. So we should really we should probably wait and discuss it with him in in, in more depth. But um, kind of an interesting thing now having watch parties with your community and, and obviously it's still through Prime. So I don't know the full restrictions on it. But if you were wanting to do it before and you weren't in a region where it was available. It's now available to you. You can have a look into it. Um, we also had a question from chat that I thought would be good to uh, just quickly go through and get everyone's thoughts on it. Um, so let me have a read through. So what is our guys' opinions on equipment? What is the importance of it? Like if a streamer has a great stream uh, presence, does it matter that it, what it looks like? Like if they're streaming through a potato as a webcam or not? Um, yeah, what's our kind of thoughts? I know we've talked about it a little bit before, but worth maybe diving back into again. Um, um i would say for me anyway my opinion on it um i know there's people that can and have and do well without a camera however i would put them in the uh the exception not the rule category um, mm -hmm. whether it is a garbage camera or not um I would say have a camera. I mean, you can get cheap. I mean, like the one you have, the Logitech was a C920, right? That's what, 60 bucks? All right, if that, wait, maybe. Wait and to it's, call me out there. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I'm you just, said, no, oh, yeah, it, you can get cheap, <laughs> crappy, like the one you have. Yeah. <laughs> like, all right. You don't, you don't have a Brio? You don't have a. I have want a one, but it's impossible to camera. get one right now. Lockdown has just. You don't have that natural ruined broca it. effect? Like, oh my God. <laughs> Where's your autofocus even at? Uh, unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you're right. I'm sorry. Sorry to cut you off. No, but yeah, it's just uh, having some, uh, you, it can be either, you know, what I'm trying to say is like, it can be either a really, really cheap one. You can get like $20 cams, whatever, or you can, you know, splurge a little bit, 60 bucks, and you can get a, the C920 has been the leading webcam for Twitch for over a decade. As far as I know, XQC still, still uses this webcam. Absolutely. Because when it comes down to camera quality, it's not so much about the camera. It's more about lighting and getting, and there's a bunch of filters you can add. I know Grog's a big fan of the LUT filters. Um, I have a couple of LUT filters on my stream as well to kind of just dial in the look that I want. Um, but when it comes to cameras, it, it's really about lighting. And you don't even have to, like, you can go cheap. Like, my setup... Like, I feel like my camera looks pretty good. 
um i mean it's the brio but like it's really more about lighting and like i don't have i didn't buy lights i have a, my my main light source my key light is an old lamp that i have i cut out a shoe box and i put white wax paper over it to diffuse the light that's my key light that's yeah. what i use it's a shoe box and you know so if you get proper lighting a camera that's the first step, I think, in terms of like gear wise. You don't have to. How have hot does that that paper box and wax paper get? Out of curiosity, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, it's on fire. You right? got smoke alarms in there, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's currently on fire, but you know what? <laughs> it gets a nice ambiance the, in the room. <laughs> I'm on the complete like opposite side of of that, and dude, I I. I regret it, but I don't at the same time, if that makes sense. Like, I've done so much to, like, upgrade and, and do all that. But, like, I look back at it now and I'm like, man, I really didn't need this when I could have gone for this and spent so much less, you know? Yeah, 100%. My, I, I think that generally, if <laughs> there's one thing that all streams have, if... If, if, as Humps pointed out, there are many successful streamers that have no camera, right? They, they have, they have really engaging streams and they have like a lovely community and there's good gameplay and, and all that good stuff. But the one thing that they have that streams with a camera have is audio. Yeah. To me, that's, that's I think yeah. like audio mm -hmm. and quality audio is way more important than video. Tell I that think that. <laughs> well, he's he, got, no, he's, he's, he's nice done mic game. now. He doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't sound nice like mic. he's trapped in like a trucker's cab now. Um, <laughs> breaker, breaker, one nine, come in. This is Dirty Bird. Uh, like he just before it sounded like he was talking over a CB radio. Um, <laughs> no, but I think that like audio is important. Sorting out your audio in terms of your levels. Uh, sorting out your audio in terms of like whether you you use like a mixer to like fade music uh or if you I, I just at the end of the day people don't always watch your stream if they're tuned into your stream sometimes yeah. people throw up your stream because they're cooking maybe they're doing dishes maybe they're folding laundry maybe they're like working like on their own computer doing their own project um there's a lot of time that i know that from a personal standpoint and from what other people have told me that when they're on Twitch, they're not always like eyes glued to Twitch. But if your audio is jacked or it's staticky or it's dropping or you're peeking into the red and your your audio is clipping, like regardless of whether you run a camera or not, that's going to affect you. So I think having baseline, a decent microphone and also like decent understanding of your, your audio levels for the stream are probably more critical than the quality of your picture or the placement of your overlay if you have a webcam. Because like you figure too, even if you have a cool overlay and you have like a you know cool looking webcam and you got that nice bokeh effect and it's super crisp and all that, that's in the periphery. You know, webcams are never put dead center in the screen. What's in the center of the screen is always the game. So people are always gonna be slightly more drawn to the game. Uh, and what's happening in the game than they are to you. But the thing is, they can't help avoid hearing you. Yeah. Just like they can't help avoid hearing the game. So if you have bad audio, that to me, I think is going to be more of a cardinal sin than having bad video. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I My agree. thing is like the the super like bulky and like extravagant <laughs> overlays that cover up like way too much of the screen. Like having a like a face cam that has two things on the side that look like a mirror. Like, that's just, it, it gets to the point where it's just too much. You know what I'm, like, you know. Don't you know fuck yourself. You know <laughs> it's not a mirror, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, though? Like, where it's, where it's, like, taking up way too much of the screen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, like, there's stuff all the way around with, like, all different numbers. And, you're like, you're super <laughs> distracted by it. Like, like mine, I, I literally just have, I have my face cam, which has, uh, like, sub count, um, a rotating feed and then like my socials on the bottom and that's it like that's all that's on my screen yeah and the rest is all just gameplay so oh. like seeing the like these I, I i think we're all guilty of it you know starting out and seeing like the cool overlays and you're like wow it moves and it takes up yeah. like the entire screen <laughs> like 
like looking at that i'm like man <laughs> why did i do that <laughs> yeah, dude, i've got the camera taking up 75 percent of the screen and then just like a little box of gameplay down the bottom exactly you know? it's the mirror the mirrored camera thing you know on the side it's not a mirror <laughs> just i i think bent. it's bent <laughs> my thoughts on it like there are a lot of people that i feel go out and invest all this money right off the bat because they're like i'm gonna be a streamer and i'm gonna go buy a thousand dollar pc and you know the best microphone and, and camera and i think there's a place for that right i'm not calling anyone out if you are convinced Me. this is what i'm gonna do <laughs> then that's fine but a lot of people do that and then quit because they realize uh, hey mm -hmm. it's not that easy it's not like i'm just gonna turn on all this stuff and i i deserve viewers because of the money i've spent like it's there's a lot of people with very very slick clean professional looking streams out there uh and you know i don't think it matters how great your stream looks it's not going to stand out for that reason um mm -hmm. to me it's it's no, one, no one's going to be streaming to 200 plus people because they're <clears throat> overlays dope you know what i mean like that's exactly. that's not why people are coming to your stream like oh man that's that guy's like really thought... moved I spent two hundred dollars to have someone make me overlays. Right? You want to know how many I use of them now? None. <laughs> yeah. None Not of them. one. <laughs> you know what I did? I made it. I made my own little webcam border with a gray box image from Google. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, and I'm happy with it. It looks great, in my opinion. You know, I'm just mm -hmm. like, wow, this is why did I pay that when I just i hate myself for it why did i do that man you can uh yeah you can definitely get by without having to to blow that money my opinion on mm -hmm. it honestly if you want to like if you're listening to this right now and you're thinking about getting into streaming find the the baseline right get get yourself to a point where you can stream gameplay if you have a camera great if not as long as you've got a microphone that sounds okay just hit that point right i've seen i know things are a little different now but when i first joined twitch there was a lot of people that were uh you know had thousands of viewers streaming directly on a ps4 i mean i started with a ps4 and the the sh like this shitty thing this i can't really show it actually that's a bad idea i'm tearing out my whole setup <laughs> but like with the shitty um the ps4 camera that's designed for like the vr stuff like terrible camera quality you know heads this headset mic which at the time i was like oh this sounds great and you know now looking back it's like that was <laughs> awful but you know like you stream for a few months like that you build yourself up and you know what maybe that day when you get your first paycheck from twitch go and buy a microphone right invest that money back into your stream and grow as you grow because there is no point uh having all this stuff with no viewers and <clears throat> you know realistically even if you turned on your first ever stream and you'd spent all this money and you had a thousand viewers in your chat, you don't know what to do. You you yeah, you don't know how to handle that. I, I wouldn't be able to handle that. There's no way. You have to grow as your channel grows. And I feel like your level of professionalism and, and your, your camera and your microphone and all the stuff can grow over time as well. Because mm -hmm. that's the most organic way to do it. And I feel like that's the way you're going to get the best results. Just wait till you get hurt, hit with your first 100 viewers and you're like, like i have to read that dude oh uh, yeah flying and you're like uh it's oh, dude, uh, that, that, that that point is really key i think that kind of me is like growing with your stream because yeah. like if you just took fresh streamer and then like here's a few hundred viewers you're lost you are lost i mean like i mean personally for mine i had like the first big raid i had from like a a, a partnered streamer like it was like 400 or so people that came in and you know I don't average 400 viewers. So it was like, <laughs> I was, comp I was just doing this right now, just mumbling and bumbling, like acting like I knew what I was. It took like 15 minutes and someone's like, so tell us about yourself. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh shit, that's right. Yeah. Uh, hey, <laughs> I crazy. have a question for y'all. Do you, do y'all raid, um, like new or really small streamers or no? I, I try to as often as I can. I went through a phase where I would like, look at it and be like okay i'm gonna raid someone with maybe the same amount of viewers maybe slightly larger um and i still i mix it up a little bit so a lot of times i'll raid like one of these guys if they're on um or i'll raid somebody that i know from my channel that's maybe getting in uh sometimes i'll just pick the next person down in the directory of the game i'm playing but um there's something super nice about hitting a brand new streamer with only a few mm -hmm. viewers with a raid um 
though I, I can appreciate it can be intimidating. Like a similar experience to yeah. Humps. I was playing Sea of Thieves one day and we got a raid for, I think, 1,200 people. And I was, I was, I did not make a good impression, right? <laughs> like <laughs> none of those people are going to come back because I was, mm -hmm. I was not prepared for it. I was not ready for that. And I kind of, it was, it was just terrifying. Um, mm -hmm. But I think, yeah, if you've got like what, 15, 20 viewers and you go and raid someone that has five, that's going to make their day. And that's, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It's not like, going to overwhelm them. It's a good feeling. Um, yeah. Definitely something so I try and do. I don't anymore. Um, you don't what? Don't, raid smaller I, or raid period? I, I don't raid uh, smaller. Um, I know it sounds really like mean, but I did. I always, always used to, always used to, you know, 30 viewers, 40 viewers, I always used to. Um, I raided a guy. Um, I'm not going to say his name, but like I raided a guy. Um, I had 150, raided him with 150. Um, he froze, cried, turned the stream off. Oh shit! Has not has not streamed since. So I was like, okay, I'm <laughs> no longer <laughs> doing that because I don't want to be the reason why someone stops streaming. You know, like you know what I mean? Got like, it. That, dude, that hit me, man. Because like people, if I do raid someone that's smaller, I will, I'll like search for them first before I stream and talk with them for a little bit. Sure. And be like, you know, hey man, like, have you, how long have you been streaming for? Like, like, <clears throat> what's the most you've had? You know, like, yeah. Stuff like that and try and like get some like information out of them. Like if I like their stream and stuff like that. And then, and then I'll go do it once I know that they're not going to, it's not going to like push them over that edge, you know? Yeah. That's really interesting. I didn't think about that. Yeah. I'd never thought about mm -hmm. that either. I, I haven't rated anyone that I don't know in a long time and usually what i try to do is i follow so i i watch a lot of streams i'll follow streams over when they raid someone else i'll hang out for a bit um because you know obviously whenever you do a raid like there's a big chunk of people who you just lose within the first like 30 seconds they just you know they yeah, go on they, they do bounce. other stuff and that's that's totally fine there's nothing wrong with that but what what I try to do is I try and hang out for a bit, see what the person's about, catch their vibe. If they seem cool, I drop them a follow always. And what I try to do then is I try, if it's someone I don't know well, or if it's someone who's smaller, I will raid them whenever I can. Um, or if it's an acquaintance, I'll do that. But for people that I don't know well, I prefer to do it if I follow them through another raid. And the reason being is a couple times I just raided people in the directory that like I didn't know, but they only had a couple of viewers and I thought, Hey, wouldn't this be cool to drop them a raid? I did that once. And well, I did it a couple, I did that several times and it was totally fine. Then once I did it and then things were fine. The person was chill. I hung out in their chat for a little while. I talked to them and then they said some like fucked up stuff. And I was like, shit. Cause now <laughs> it's like, I didn't, I was just from, I came at it from the point of view we were both trying to grow. We were both small. Um, I again, this I, I checked them out briefly. Like the person looked kind of all right, and then um, you know I read their bio, and then like you know they start making unsavory comments, and I'm just like, well, shit, I don't want to expose my community to that, and, you know, and I don't want to put people in the position that like to imply that like I endorse that. Yeah. So I'll, then I'm like, well, okay, I'm not. I'm just. I won't do sort of cold call raids anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got to be somebody that. Either I know um, through a friend. So, like, for example, if Condi goes and raids somebody and I hang out in their stream, you know, after his stream ends or our Humps does that or or I know, like, you know, Humps has talked about people and I'm like, oh, fuck, you know what? Humps, is, Humps has talked about that person. I'm going to go drop them a raid because, you know what? I go off of their credibility. I trust, I trust Josh and I trust, you know, Andrew. So, like, if these guys, like, are regularly raiding people, um, then I will go raid them too, because it's just like kind of that, that extended community, uh, that I already feel comfortable with and I don't have to really worry about, but I, I think it can, you gotta be careful just raiding someone you absolutely have no idea because right. you're, you're attached to that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, I, I raided someone with a 30 minute delay once. <clears throat> 
um, <laughs> or it's it's when what? you raid someone with follower only, or you start I spamming you emotes, and the bots like get the fuck out of here. You do because you go like, all right, chat, we're gonna go over there and spam this emote, and then the bot just times out everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we my whole community waited the thirty minutes for her to see the because it was it was a girl. Someone was like, hey. You should raid this girl. She's really good. Blah blah blah. And I was like, okay, cool. We'll do it. Raided her. Thirty minute delay. Thirty minutes later, we're all just sitting there watching. She has like <laughs> seventy something viewers, and then all of a sudden, she just goes, "Oh my god, thank you for the raid." We're like, ah, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> oh. It's uh, it is interesting. Like Grog says that there's always the fear that you're gonna raid someone that's um you know, maybe doesn't stand for the same sort of things that you do. And uh, it, it, uh, it can always be a risk. Um, you know, there's, there's all sorts of people on, on the platform. And, you know, for example, if you're a, a family friendly channel, if that's your whole vibe and you raid me and I'm like, Oh, this fucking guy, uh, like, it's obviously not good. Right. Like it's, uh, mm. there's, there's definitely something to be said about doing your research a little bit. Um, you know, if you're looking for people to raid, you know, go in the directory on you know after you get done a stream and just see who's who's around you know and keep an eye on the sort of people that are on the time that you're finishing your stream and then go that's past a good the point I, i'm in a position i'm very lucky a lot of my stream we talk about uh the same sort of things we talk about here we talk about uh things to do on twitch how to grow how to approach different situations because like we all know uh you know it's not just as simple as start streaming and we're there there is you know um you do, there's so much going on um behind the scenes for all of us i'm sure right it's it's uh it's a lot of different things so you often don't have time to do that luckily because i'm talking about all this stuff all the time on twitch a lot of my viewers are also streamers uh, and I will see a lot of them online when I'm finishing and, and I can kind of go well this person hangs out in my chat they're pretty cool I can go and rate them right um, and mm. if not then at least I do have this network of friends like all you guys that are usually on I have the advantage of being in the time zone where uh, when I'm finishing my stream it's kind of a good time for you guys to be on anyway so <laughs> usually I, I've got one of you guys on to, to hit with a raid but um, definitely it's something to 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 kind of research and put a little bit of time into it and hell use it as a in a way use it as a tool to to build a, a friendship or a connection with another streamer that's maybe of a similar size mm -hmm. that makes similar content hit them with a raid one day uh, you know maybe hey we should stream together sometime you know it's it's it, it can be used it, not used that's a bad way but like you could kind of use it as a way to 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 form these connections with other creators and other communities and other streamers so um Doing your research definitely can pay off for, for raids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do we have anything else or are we kind of ready to uh, to wrap up here? I'm good. I'm good. All right. Fantastic. Well, uh, yeah, this has been the Zero Strategy Podcast episode 26. Uh, if you are listening uh, or watching in the live stream, thank you very, very much. Uh, we're going to just quickly go around everyone and uh, do some shout outs. So, Grog... Where can people find you on the internet and what do you want to plug? Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitch and YouTube at just underscore grog uh, and on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at gamer underscore grog. Uh, I stream five days a week. Um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, I do long streams. And then Saturdays, I do like a two-hour stream around like 1130 Eastern with my wife. And we do like um, variety streams and like couch co-op and kind of arcade like lighthearted fair and then uh usually i'll do like a stream after the podcast so um play a lot of warzone oh, just a yeah. little bit just a little bit <laughs> just a little yeah. bit just a little bit right now awesome cool go follow guys uh humps where can everyone find you uh you all can find me here on twitch <laughs> sir humps the twitter sir humps underscore because whatever instagram sir humps tiktok so i haven't posted on tiktok in a minute i gotta i know i've been missing them. it just takes ever because like i, mean, I miss those sous vide videos dude i'm surprised that did not blow up i thought that was an amazing video <laughs> hey we know that now we know 11 30 had like sound effects and stuff <laughs> like, oh my gosh did you did you add a filter Oh, damn it it was it was like <laughs> him with like meat in a bag putting it on a cutting board and just went bonk like there's just <laughs> they were filter, man. so damn funny it. all right filters i'll know that filters 
<laughs> and I probably posted it not at 11:30, which yeah. you know, I'll do that There's from now problem, on. Problem, man. I know. It. If only I had, uh, if only I had been here on time last time. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> if only if you remembered it was Sunday. <laughs> Dude, I woke up at like three o'clock and I was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, yeah. So speaking of uh, Corpy, where can everyone find you as well, and what do you want to plug? Um, it's Corpy across every social platform. Um, I stream Tuesdays through Saturdays, starting at seven PM Central Time. Um, you better be there. I'm gonna climb through this little tiny phone. I'm kind of tubby, so I might break your monitor, <laughs> but I will. <laughs> no, but uh, dude, thank y'all so much for having me through. Oh, absolutely, man. Dude, thank you good so much you for, for coming on. Uh, really good to pick your brain and get some of the get some some hints and tips, honestly. Very, very uh good. So thank you for having us. Make sure and go follow guys. Uh the link is in the, the chat as well. Uh I'm Condi Fly. You can find me Twitch, uh YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, all the places that you might expect. Um I have a video dropping today, actually. Uh my first Fall Guys montage. It's pretty hype. So uh, that's gonna be dropping. How many uh, wins in- are in the montage? uh how many wins would you th- expect to be in a montage zero depends well i mean like an actual montage like you know there's however much you think there's more all right there all there the wins. Music? Like, <laughs> there's, there's, there's more than zero music. There's, <laughs> yeah, you'll see you'll see that's going live in uh, a little half an hour from now so uh make sure and check that out uh but more importantly uh yeah the podcast we just got some dope new artwork which is up on all our socials uh you can find us on twitter at zero strategy pod uh we also have a youtube channel so these uh episodes uh get uploaded onto youtube as well as some other video content that we do from time to time um if you're watching the live stream and you maybe want to catch old episodes youtube or spotify is the place to go you can find us on both those platforms um yeah thank you so much for watching um and we're gonna go raid someone so please feel free to stick around for that uh yeah i think that's us thank you so much guys we'll see you next week later bye